Hey everyone, welcome to our channel. If you're new here, this episode we're answering our top 5 questions that we get as a family travelling full time. So boil the jug, make a hot drink and get ready for our experience so far living on the road full time in New Zealand over the last 8 months. Hopefully there's something helpful here. Okay, okay. so we have the 5 thing points of question... Or... <laughs> That's where we're up to. <laughs> Okay, so we've got the five most commonly asked questions that we get about being on the road full time. Our first one is um, money. Definitely, people ask a lot about money, 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 money. especially um, expectation versus reality. Like, what did we expect that we were going to spend? I expected we would need about six hundred and fifty dollars, roughly, a week to live off. It's definitely a lot higher than that. A couple of hundred more, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, like maybe $750, $800 a week is what we've uh, been needing to spend. And that's with us being quite frugal uh, with money. Like, we definitely don't buy expensive items. Um, Our biggest expense is definitely groceries, and that has gone up a lot since when we budgeted this about two years ago. So, yeah. um, groceries, we're probably spending over $350 a week. Five hungry mouths. Our kids are not small and are not shy on eating so um yeah that's definitely number one biggest expense diesel has got a lot cheaper than it was when we first came or well, when we first hit the road um and we get really good discounts through the nzmca i think this week it's around a dollar fifty something a litre of diesel if you're not on the nzmca it's a good way to save some money on diesel costs but we... told ya but we are spending about yeah, we're spending about $400 a month on diesel, which just comes directly out of our bank account. And that's also including running our diesel heater. But that, that's a lot better than, than we anticipated. I think I thought we'd be spending about $150 a week, so saving. What's, what's a shame though is that what we were expecting to pay in groceries and what we were expecting to pay in diesel and how they've passed each other, hmm. it doesn't counterbalance at all because groceries are so much more expensive. We've, we've probably spent about $120 a month on average paying for accommodation, so that's things like NZMCA parks or when we've um, parked at park over properties or private property in the NZMCA, often they'll charge $10 a night. Um, so that's not too we, bad. We try and do as much free camping as we can. Yep. Um, we've bought this caravan so that we could and so we try and maximise that. Uh, sometimes um, we just need the facilities at an NZMCA or sometimes that's or the security. only option that's there. Somewhere secure to park as well yeah. if we're in a town. The next one is LPG I think. Uh, yeah. We go through an LPG bottle 9kg about every 8. No, every 11 days. Oh sorry 11 days? No, yeah. I don't know. Yeah every 11 days we go through a gas bottle. I think it's less than that. No because we do like 3 a month. I feel like we go about nine days. Um, but they cost about thirty to forty dollars um, to fill, depending on where we are in the country. Yeah, um, laundry. Oh, laundry. Laundry, I think, is the hidden one. Uh, I can't remember what I budgeted for it, but we probably spend about twenty bucks each time we go, and try to go no earlier than ten days. Kids wear your clothes several times so great when people offer their washing machine and facilities because that's... Thanks Rachel. <laughs> <coughs> Thanks Charlotte. <laughs> yeah. Um, miscellaneous, so just random things, buying pies on the road. We don't really buy coffees anymore <laughs> but you know I can't live without my pies. We probably spend about $80 a week on just... It's not just on pies, it's like replacing other stuff in the caravan. Knick -knack things, yeah. Things that don't quite fit groceries but... Fish bait, tackle just random bits Gun and pieces. <laughs> yeah, so some other things that have been uh, a little bit expensive is like we had to replace the front tires on the truck, which is pretty just standard wear and tear on the road. That was like $600 um, to get the front tires replaced. We got a service and we found out our truck brakes needed new uh, brake pads and new discs and that was $1,200. So those are like some quite high costs. It's like $2,000 in the last seven months just on maintenance for the truck. Uh, we also had to buy some winter gear for the kids, so everyone got gum boots and some like warmer clothing. We went to all the op shops to try and find um, really cheap things before we splashed out on some brand new stuff. But we did find some cheap gear at the op shop. Good way to save some money on op the road. Op shop's the way to go. A lot of people ask, do, are we working on the road? So no, we're not working on the road. We actually did a money video a year and a half or so ago. I'll put a link to that up the top there. Um, so we just saved 
for about three years. Um, we just made our mortgage repayments the minimum that we could, so that way we could save the maximum amount of money that we could. We also had an old retro caravan we sold. We had two cars that we sold um, after we brought the truck, and that all kind of went towards paying for this time that we're having on the road. Now that we are coming into winter, definitely um, really struggling with power and our solar system and batteries just not been enough. So we have been looking for a bit of work. I've done a few plastering painting jobs. So we've been in Twizel, which has um, helped boost boost our bank account a little bit. And we're also parked up for free at the moment, Shut which up. really helps too. So we'll try and make a bit of money over this winter because we would love, we want to keep traveling. We don't really want to um, slow down anytime soon. So we'll make some money over the winter to keep us going over the next summer. Direction. This question is always directed at me, a bit of a gender role there, but everyone's like, oh, how are your kids school? Um, we use Takuda, uh, so it is a national school program. Uh, they have a teacher who meets with them regularly online and stays in touch with them during the week. She assigns all the work, does all that hard stuff. Um, so we're not responsible for finding any curriculum, uh, just supporting their learning. And so for the girls, they're, they're pretty independent with their stuff. I mean, they'll always come and ask for help or something, but they can kind of follow the instructions and figure out what they're doing. Uh, Toby, who is learning to read, needs a lot of one-on-one -on -one support, and so that probably takes up most of the support time with that. Um, but with school, people are like, oh, do you do school in the morning and the afternoon? We honestly just do it when it suits us, uh, which is something that we love. We often have it, like, weather-based or... Uh, whatever we're planning for the day based. It's not uncommon for the kids to do schoolwork over the weekend because every day is a Saturday for us. Um, and yeah, we probably on average do about three or four days a week doing schoolwork and probably a few hours each day that we do it. But like I said, it's all over the place and sometimes one of the kid, girls especially will go, oh, can I just do a bit of schoolwork? <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> uh, and Toby, I'll often prompt him to grab whatever his latest reading is almost every day just to keep his reading up but yeah they really enjoy doing the schoolwork which is helpful for us they um have an opportunity to hop on like an online class once a week and they really enjoy that social contact with some other students yeah. um so that's that's cool for them um this is something that worked for us and we qualified for it because we are transient a lot of people comment about the beautiful places that we find to go camping, especially the free ones. Um, so how do we find these awesome free places to go camp around New Zealand? Um, we just pretty much use apps. We just use the NZMCA app. We just read the reviews and the comments that other people have written about them. Um, we use Campermate. We were using Wikicamps, but I think I've been I've updated and I can't get into that anymore. So that's all right. We use the doc, the doc stuff. Sometimes just good old Google. <laughs> so. We've also had a whole lot of people that we've met on the road that have pointed us towards some campgrounds as well that we weren't going to go to that have been really great. But often we'll look at the app and we'll see a location and then I'll look at it on my phone or on the computer and I'll go like Google satellite imagery and then you can actually have like a proper look around. Does the water look really clear there? How much space is there? You kind of get a bit more of an idea looking at like a satellite image. That's one of the things I do. A few people asking, how do you like get into living a lifestyle like this? Like, how do how do you plan it? How do you get from being in a house to being in a caravan on the road? Um, we are very much just a normal family. I was working as a youth worker and doing some plaster and painting work. Soph's a social worker, so we did not have like a large sum of money or any inheritance or financial help from anybody. We just kind of saved up and like I said earlier we sold some things and um, changed our financial situation by paying the minimum that we possibly could on our mortgage so that we could save the maximum that we could to get on the road. Um, so we had kind of a three year plan that we worked towards to, you know, choose, like going to look at caravans, paying our deposit, waiting for the build, picking it up and then we actually went to America we did the summer camp thing which was a free trip, another whole video um you, we could be done on that but not a free trip not a free trip but you get paid a trip that eventually almost paid for itself yeah with what we earned from working at the camp but um we didn't just wake up yesterday and thought oh let's go live on the road and just see how we get on we had a quite a extensive plan looked at lots of different things towards our finances and our mortgage and debt that we had to see how we could kind of like have a negative 
I don't know. What do you call it? Yeah, we could leverage it a bit. Yeah. Um, a massive part of it is, I guess, opportunity and the privilege of having owned our home for about 12 years. And so um, very different financial situation to... People uh, that are just buying now. People that are just or... buying now. And so I think that's important to acknowledge it's not... Um, it was a lot easier for us to leverage our mortgage um, because we had so much equity in that house. Definitely feels like there's some risk involved with um, like walking away from your house or renting it out to ch completely change your lifestyle. Uh, there was a lot of like emotional stuff with the kids as well, leaving friends and leaving jobs in a place that we really loved. Um, but we really wanted to use this time with our kids before they get too old and cool and develop cool. <laughs> yeah, develop their own lives and interests as they get older. So we wanted to do this now before we before we lose the chance. So yeah, we're definitely enjoying it. It was definitely hard, a very hard process to get to this point to being on the road. Um, yeah, and that's definitely worth acknowledging, I think, for us. Yeah, it yeah, wasn't it, it wasn't easy. And I don't think this is for everybody. I think um, some clues for us were we enjoyed being together over the lockdowns. Um, we've always loved camping. We've always loved camping. We weren't overly intimidated by being in a small space. And I guess we'll talk Sex a bit question. more. Okay, <laughs> and question number five is how do we get on living in a small space together? Squashed on this little caravan, especially now, I guess that winter is on our doorstep. And it's dark at five o'clock, and I don't. I feel like it's fine. <laughs> we haven't like hated each other yet, so I guess no. that's a good sign. Um, I think the kids having their own little bunk space, their own cupboards at the end of the bunks, and mum's made them some curtains. It's kind of like that. That's their little rooms, and often during the day when they need space, you'll just see them kind of fly in there and shut the curtain. And, that's their version of putting themselves into a bit of space, a bit of time out. Um, if the weather's bad, the kids definitely get like so much built up energy that they need to get out of. So that can be a bit hard if they they need to go for a big long walk or go outside and play a running why, around game. That's why we've got gum boots and jackets. <laughs> so that, you know we're not we don't have to be inside for terrible weather. We can still go and yeah. check something out. And we've done that a few times. We've been really lucky with the weather too, though. We haven't had... I don't think we've had two days of rain in a row. Oh, we did at Monkey Island. And Hawke's Bay. Oh, yeah, but that's um, uh, that was still summer, though. Yeah, that was a terrible but summer. But while it's been winter and cold and you don't want to go out, we've, we've been very lucky in the South Island. We've had good weather. So we'll wait and see till we string three, four, five days of like rubbish weather together. I'm sure we'll make a video especially about yeah. that if that happens We hate winter. Us. <laughs> um, I think the other thing is that we have things that we do for ourselves. Mike likes running. You would have seen a few of his running videos, and he'll just go off on a run. And I'm I'm the only one with a bike, <laughs> and I've been doing a lot of biking. And so I guess that's how we get some space to ourselves. Um, and often we'll do that well before it's desperately needed, so that. Um, Good self-management. Yeah, a bit of good self-management. <laughs> um, cool. Well, that is our five most common asked questions. Hopefully, that was helpful for you. Um, the money one, I just feel like that's probably the biggest question for people considering this way of life. Um, it's just quite... Yeah, things are quite expensive out there. And it's yeah, it's definitely a bit of a challenge trying to save money. I guess you could just eat toast and, and jam. But... Um, I think in round terms, all up, about... Three to three and a half thousand a month. Yeah. That's a lot, man. If you have any questions, any other questions that you want to ask us, feel free to write it in the comments. Um, normally we're traveling around, but that'll be the next video, I guess. I've got a few more ideas about some uh, some five tips. We might do our five winter, winter tips for wintering in your caravan. And I think another one is uh, five tips of how to save money when you're on the road definitely got a few hacks on that now We've got lots of great videos coming up <laughs> you're such a dork <laughs> all right see you later